From the I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the we see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just two pounds a ticket, no purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see mckinneycompetitions.com. If I found that something was wrong, I was never able to shut my mouth. <laughs> so I suppose that's the short answer to how did I get involved. Yeah. Whether it's for an abortion or an ingrown toenail or a, an appendicectomy, whatever it is, if you're accessing healthcare, you should be free to do it without somebody waving graphic images in your face or untrue signs. We had a long enduring campaign um, supported far and wide to campaign to support the retention of the emergency department in Daisy Hill and from something that started as just a few of us deciding to make a, a dignified protest like within two weeks it had been spoke about in Stormont three times. You've just been listening to the voice of Cara Malone, one of the members of Supporting Women Yuri a group that was set up after the abortion legislation was passed in 2019. The purpose of the group is to provide free access to health care without fear or intimidation. They began campaigning after protest groups began to show up outside clinics with posters and banners um, who were intimidating people who were trying to access the clinics. This is your host Elaine Ingram and here is Cara to tell us all about supporting women Yuri and what they do. So I am here with Cara from Supporting Women Yuri and um, this is a group that was set up um, re recently. When, when were you set up? February time. Yeah and the, the whole reason for the group being set up was because of issues that have been happening um, since the legislation was passed in 2019. Um, for abortion rights in Northern Ireland? It was indeed. Protests had started shortly before Christmas time outside John Mitchell Place in Newry, a multi-use facility, a National Health Service multi-use facility. And pro-life groups such as Precious Life and um, CBRNI had started gathering at the gates with explicit images of what they purported to be aborted babies, uh, signs saying b babies are killed in this building and started harassing people as they were accessing healthcare. This went on for a number of weeks. Some high profile politicians like Jim Wells joined them on one occasion and there was rumblings throughout the town. You were hearing of different people who had been trying to access John Mitchell Place and had been questioned about why they were there, what they were doing and predominantly it was young women that were being targeted. So a number of us here who would be campaigners within the town, we had campaigned for to save Daisy Hill, we had campaigned over different issues within the town, had got together and formed a group called Supporting Women Newry. And main... Yeah, just to be sorry to interrupt you, just I just want to make it, it clear that you and you've stated this yourself um, on your on your Facebook page and everything that you don't have any, you know, you're, you're not trying to say anything one way or the other on the abortion debate on, on where you stand. You're not taking, you don't take any stance on that. As a group, we take no stance on the abortion issue. We don't debate the abortion issue. Our issue is that people should have free access to healthcare without fear or intimidation. Yeah. That's our only aim and that's what we have continued with. We haven't engaged in the abortion debate whatsoever. So we formed a group and decided that in a dignified manner we would go and ask them to move their protest from outside a multi-use health centre to a more appropriate setting. We had also heard about staff members who we have to remember these pro-life groups all wear body cams as they're on protest. 
Really? So they fo- they were following staff members to their cars with their body cams on. And would there be a large number of them now? They're, now at the moment they have reduced to four. There's only four of them present now at Daisy Hills. And do you think that's, moved. is that is that as a result of your work, do you think, or no, has it helped? No, we don't think that, that um, they have reduced in number. As a result of that, I, I think they've just waned in numbers. Uh, there was a conglomerate of groups that had started meeting down there. There was um, a group called Let Them Live, there was CBRNI, there was Precious Life, all pro-life groups, and they had come together. It seems to be now only Precious Life who come and stand outside Daisy Hill, so maybe that's the waning of the numbers. But staff members were beginning to feel intimidated. Yeah. They didn't know where the footage of these body cams were going. Why were they being followed to their cars? Why were their number plates? There, there was a security issue. And there was nothing staff. that could, could really have been done about it, was there not, I suppose, when it's Apparently on? not. The police were there every week outside John Mitchell Place. They um, stood. The, there was no... It was during covid for a yeah. start, it was during COVID. People were travelling from Ballymena, from Tipperary South, from Dublin, to stand outside John Mitchell Place with these graphic images. We kept within COVID guidelines. Yes, we did gather, but we gathered entirely separately. Nobody was from outside a 10 mile radius. Uh, we kept our masks on. We kept two metres apart because we didn't want to bring people onto the street to further exacerbate the pressures the health service were on. Yeah. Because there wouldn't be much point in in trying to defend the health service and then put them under more pressure. Yeah. And we were very cognizant of that. So we started counter-protesting every week against these people. The Southern Trust stood up and... um, took responsibility for the staff and supported their staff in terms of moving the clinic to a more secure site. But this didn't deter the pro-life groups. However, they got their information about where where the, the clinic had moved to or anything, we don't know. But they started protesting outside Daisy Hill Hospital. And what, what sort of signs and things did they have? They had signs that said babies are killed in this building. They had signs saying abortion is not healthcare, and they had pictures, which they purported to be a early medical abortion, which would be below ten weeks, and they had pictures of fully formed babies with arms and legs pulled off, and they had gory pictures purporting this to be an early medical abortion. They were handing out leaflets for um, telling people that they had a pill which would, if you took the first abortion, the early medical abortion is two pills, and they purported that they could um, stop it after the first pill. Now, these trials have all been stopped because they're unsafe. Yeah. But um, this so is So it was what, misinformation. The, absolutely were... misinformation. And they were handing out these leaflets. And their their manner, as in gathering in, in a large group outside a healthcare facility, is in itself intimidating. I, I read somewhere, I think it was on, on your um, Facebook page, something, there was some, some story about some uh, a nurse that was there that was, had there to, was. that her daughter. Uh, yes, a nurse, her child, yeah. who had been with the father dropping the mother off to work, had witnessed these pictures and had become very offhand with the mother and they couldn't understand what was happening um, when the child eventually told the mother why he was recoiling from her he thought his mother killed babies okay. because that's the building she worked in and that's what the signs were saying and that's what the signs were saying so between the graphic images and the untrue signs we just feel that it's wrong yeah. It's entirely wrong. People should be able to go. People accessing Daisy Hill Hospital now, who may be going to accident emergency, who may be going into a relative who may not have long left to live, they don't need to be 
accosted by people yeah. outside a healthcare facility. Nor do they need someone with body cams and nobody knows what the footage is being used for or where the footage is being stored. People are accessing their healthcare appointments without privacy, without dignity. Yeah. Being videoed entering buildings. We think that's unfair. We think women who have had miscarriages and stillbirths who go to the same clinic for their counselling, for their aftercare, that's re-traumatising women. Yeah. We think that's unfair. This is all being done in the name of Christianity. That's not what Christianity is about. Yeah. Christianity is not about harassing women. Christianity is not about scaring children. That's not what Christianity is about. Christianity is about getting up and adding value to somebody else's life. Yeah. And that's what we think we're doing. We think we're adding value to people's life. Staff in Daisy Hill have told us, have thanked us profusely for the stance that we have taken. You also you, you also uh, um, assist um, women as in you'll you know, walk into the facility with them if they're feeling intimidated. Absolutely. Is that we have, that's a service you provide? We have escorts available. If anyone feels intimidated and needs to access the clinic, any clinic. For whatever reason. For whatever reason and feels intimidated by them, we have someone who will accompany them that they have safe passage to healthcare. Yeah. We know it's a very we know the whole issue is a very emotive issue. But our issue is not about abortion. Our issue yeah, is I mean, about it's a people complex being issue, able yeah. to access healthcare without any fear or intimidation. It's one of the issues in Northern Ireland, and there are there are few that aren't green or orange, or a green or orange stance can't be taken on it. This is an this is it's something a human rights issue. that affects everyone going across the gates of Daisy Hill Hospital now. Yeah, and have to be exposed to something there is no need to. We'll defend their right to protest. We will absolutely defend their right to protest. But take your protest to the policy makers. Don't take an, an intimidate women, children mm. and men who are accessing the, their human right to health care. Yeah. It's just wrong. So Cara, um so how did the group actually form? Um well as I said before we had links. We had campaigning links before with some people and others came on board when they saw our first Facebook post in terms of the first protest, our first counter protest outside um, John Mitchell Place. Um, the Facebook page absolutely was the Facebook p- page. Um, was did that exist beforehand? Did no, you, it didn't exist. So you we just you actually started it. the Facebook page for this very reason. For this reason, yes. Yeah. The sole reason is that people feel free to, to access healthcare without fear or intimidation. Yeah. Um, and how many of you we, are there? If you, Well, in terms of the committee, there are seven on the main committee and then we have 40 to 50 volunteers of people who are willing to do escorts. Yeah. Now, we don't we don't want big protests outside Daisy Hill. We're, we maintain a dignified presence every Wednesday between 10 and 11 a.m. when the clinic is not on because we do not want to add so further you don't stress. Want to add, yeah, yeah. We do not want to add further stress because to women I suppose, who maybe have to access it. And I suppose if, if somebody is just walking in and they just see a bunch of people there, they're not necessarily, they, they could think that you're affiliated with those people, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, so. A woman coming to access that clinic or any clinic in Daisy Hill does not see a pro-life protester or a pro-choice protester or an anti-harassment protester they just see someone standing there and they're probably i mean it's a distressing enough time for it is for absolutely. for any woman or man you know that's you know involved in whatever the circumstances might be and whatever you know you know who knows we don't know and exactly you know what's happening in their own lives and um you know to see any people standing there it's probably you know. That's why we made the decision. We've had quite a lot of support, yeah. not, not only in the town, but further afield. 
Um, we've had support from Alliance for Choice in Belfast who um, gave us some good information on keeping within the boundaries of the law and, and how to counter protest. Um, Claire Bailey, actually from the Green Party, has been on this issue for quite a while. She's a private member, she's working on a private member's bill to in relation to safe zones, um, creating the safe zones around clinics and healthcare facilities that the like of, of these protests can't happen. And uh, health trusts would be able to act on it then to prevent these type of protests happening. Um, Liz Kimmins, a local MLA, yeah. has supported our campaign right from the very start. And from something that started as just a few of us deciding to make a, a dignified protest, like within two weeks it had been spoke about in Stormont three times. Yeah. Well, and Liz really pushed that issue for us. I would be very grateful. Jackie Code from the Alliance Party, very supportive. Um, from from um the sidelines, Jerry Carroll from People Before Profit. So it's the parties from all, all sides of the divide. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're we're led to believe that now where it is, Liz has pushed it quite a bit and has got sort of assurances from both Alliance and um, the Ulster Unionist Party yeah. that they're open to discussions about safe zones, which is is very it's very welcome to us yeah. to hear those new that type of news. Um, because it's the only way forward. How do you stop this? You know, when when Full term of our abortions are, are commissioned and provided here. Is this going to up, up the ante of, of the pro life groups? Mm. There has to be some sort of legislation put in place to stop people being intimidated as they access healthcare. Yeah. Whether it's for an abortion or an ingrown toenail or a, an appendicectomy, whatever it is, if you're accessing healthcare, you should be free to do it without somebody waving graphic images in your face or untrue signs yeah and you and you you know you say you've got an awful lot of support from the community um people you know liking the page and writing comments and things like that in support of you i mean i've seen the, a, a lot of the comments and they are all very very supportive so this is quite a you know it's it, it, it's sad to see in this day and age that the, the amount of intimidation that obviously is going on and do you think that um you know, your group and all have brought things to the fore that maybe women are putting up with for, you know, just putting up with over the years? I, I, I don't think we've made any great steps ahead of what other groups have yeah. been doing for for years. I mean, there are, are groups who have been campaigning on this. We're, I suppose you would call us late to the table to be campaigning, but it's so far along. But our issue really is about just intimidation and harassment in our town. Yeah. We some of us on our committee fought long and hard for Daisy Hill to remain open. And we have campaigned for many, many years. And we're not prepared to sit back now and allow the gates of our wonderful hospital and our wonderful staff who have got us through a global pandemic and have worked so hard to get us through a global pandemic. We're not prepared to sit back and allow them to be disrespected in the way they're being disrespected at the minute. Yeah. And we're not prepared to sit back and allow the women and children of Newry to be disrespected as they access services either. Yeah. Get ready to shake up summer with the Get Active ABC Sunshine Fill Programme for kids and families. Get set for land-based adventure at our summer schemes, or why not get adventurous and maybe get wet at our Splashtastic Water Sports Summer Programme. There are so many things to do, and all we need is you. See getactiveabc.com slash summer for all the details. And what sort of things, you know, is, are being said to these these people going in? Are, are, are comments being made as well? And or is it just... There have there have been comments down at John Mitchell Place. There was an incident last week, which 
is the is open to legal proceedings at the minute so we can't talk about it yeah um but yes there was someone harassed um last week on the the psni were involved now we weren't there at the time but um someone sent us the video footage of it and it's disgusting yeah disgusting to try and stop a young woman walking down the street with her son absolutely disgusting yeah that nurses have to intervene that it 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 just was it was it's open to legal proceedings so yeah i'll just say no more about it and the campaign the daisy hill campaign how did you get it i mean obviously you know you're involved in a lot of community action how yourself personally how did you start getting involved in stuff like this i suppose i came from a trade union background yeah when i was working I suppose I've always just had an eye out for community activities, um, community actions. Um, if I found that something was wrong, I was never able to shut my mouth. <laughs> so I suppose that's the short answer to how did I get involved. Yeah. If I see something is wrong, I can't. I can't hold back. There's like a social injustice button on my back and <laughs> if I think it's wrong I think it's wrong yeah and a lot of the women on the committee are of the same mind if they think it's wrong they're not afraid to say it's wrong and I think it, it the, the pro-life uh camp or protests at John Mitchell Place stirred up a perfect storm of yeah. women who came together to say no this isn't right it's wrong and we're prepared to stand and be counted and when the world stood still we stood up yeah and do do you think a lot of these um campaigners or these protesters um are they are they local or are they coming in from different places the, there are some local and some who travel quite a distance so they've made so this their a the, the vendetta nearly you know that they've made this their their task And do they not see, do you think, you know, I mean, it's hard to understand the mindset of people like that, but... We've tried to converse with them. We've tried to converse with them and... And because nobody is, you know, nobody is saying that people, as you said, and, you know, I want to reiterate it again, that nobody is saying that people aren't entitled to their opinions. It's a very complex issue and people have their beliefs and their beliefs are their beliefs and nobody is arguing with that. Mm -hmm. But do they not see that what they're doing you know, is is wrong in any way? Well, as I say, we have conversed with them. We've tried to reason with them. And what sort of response and have you gotten? All we've got is the overarching babies are killed in that building and that's worse than intimidating anybody. Yes. Do you not think that's worse? Do you, the last few things, like, do you want babies killed? You're a baby murderer. They'll throw um, accusations. They took a, a faith preacher with them or a hate preacher, maybe with them from Belfast one day and he was sh- chanting homophobic um, things and how the Bible and everybody was and we were baby murderers and we were all oh, such horrible things outside John Mitchell Place but the police they can't do anything their hands are tied are they because they're on a public in a public space and you know, I, is it a freedom some... of speech issue I... I'm not sure it was more a hate it was a homophobic hate speech yeah rolled into a uh, anti-pro-choice it, it just they kind of go hand appear. in hand sometimes yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah most definitely but no the PSNI were unable to intervene even though businesses all along the street had said the solicitors firms there who had said I can't hear I'm doing consultations with the court here over the phone over the the screen zoom yeah calls into court and we can't hear and the PSNI were unable to to do anything but yet in Bambridge they were able to to make them right turn it down a bit I think at one stage yeah maybe there's a, a point where they can intervene uh, mm. you know who knows do you think this issue is something that's um more prevalent in Northern Ireland you know these extreme views um I don't think so. I think the evangelical um, American yeah. groups are um, are as bad and worse. Um, 
I know that Precious Life used some of their literature. Okay. And things like that. But um, no, I'd, I'd think um, the hate towards women who make a choice with their own body is is very palpable in, in from transatlantic. Yeah, and I suppose it's, social um, media, you know, ha- hasn't helped in that sense that the uh, groups like that can sort of communicate together and they form. They can, and they can, for, they can put out misinformation. See, and that's the worry, is the amount of misinformation is. that is out there. It is, absolutely, and, and they can massage statistics and they seem a very well oiled very well funded organization and we're we're not um equipped to go up against a well oiled and well funded organization our only issue is that they don't intimidate people as they protest yeah and take have it, you taken to where it can where, where yeah. their voice can be heard Stormant. action take it to Stormont. Yeah. yeah absolutely yeah, because, yeah, that's a completely different thing altogether. It People is. are certainly entitled to their opinions and they can protest at, at Stormont where it should be. That That's where it should be yeah. kept. Um, have you found that you've had many, had to have many escorts? Have a lot of people... We've, we've had a few. We've yeah. had a few people who were intimidated and felt awkward yeah. attending. So, yes, they were escorted by car. And how's the, the campaign? Having to walk yeah. past um, the gates of Daisy Hill, we had someone um, escort them by car. And you have men as well that are there are. that access your service. It's not just for women, you know. It's for access it's for anybody. For everybody. And have it's you for had, everybody? Have, do you found you've had many? We've, we haven't had to escort any men. We've actually yeah. we've had men have come down from the very start. Local men came down from the very start to um, support us as we stood outside um, John Mitchell Place. Yeah. But no, we haven't had to escort any men to any services. You haven't had any negative response to what you're doing, have you? But yes, well, apart the, from the people been... that you're protesting against. Exactly. <laughs> obviously, exactly. that would be the obvious. You, you do get the odd Precious Life supporter come onto the page and try to start some some friction. But we, we always say we're anti-intimidation and anti-bullying and we ask people, just don't rise to it. Just don't, don't engage, don't, because that they like that. They like the fight. They like to turn themselves into a victim by saying they're being picked at. So therefore, we, we're totally against all forms of intimidation and harassment. So we ask people just not to engage with people like that when they come on the page. Yeah. To try, you know, our page. So is, do you, is would you monitor people. the page then and make sure that there's nothing that's going to be uh, divisive? Yeah, we try to. Yeah, we try to. Yeah. It, it, it is all very positive I, from is. what I've seen. You know, all the comments and everything are applauding, applauding what you're doing because, you know, it is just, you know, looking after people and their, and their, just their human rights. It is. We're dignified, we're strong, we remain united. And we've said all along that we're here for everybody. How long have you been involved in, um, you know, this these type of um, protests and community? Too, too long. <laughs> all of your life, would you say? All of my life, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably all of my life. And there's no... I have and, the switch, I told you, the social the, injustice switch, <laughs> where you just think, no. And what right. about the Daisy Hill thing? How, how, how did you... How did oh, that... we had a long, enduring campaign. Um supported far and wide to campaign to support the retention of the emergency department in Daisy Hill and there was a local community pathfinder group set up. We nominated someone on it and it has been working and attracted funding etc to keep Daisy Hill open. Yeah and that was the whole, some a, whole A and E was extended and and modernized and it's, it's state of the art but now, it really was touch and go wasn't it i mean it really it was going it was. wasn't it it was and it's it's because of um campaigns like yours that every that, political party i mean it was a very but it's grassroots i mean it does it definitely come from the it bottom starts. if we all just sat there and just it would be gone it was a local councillor here um gavin malone yeah no relation but gavin malone who um initially Sort of, it was a Facebook 
thing as well initially started and then political parties started coming in there's even murals on the wall and on the walls and you're in some of the there is mural there the is wall, yeah 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 up beside the the noah there's a lovely big um that's noah that's another Donahue. issue that you uh, yeah i know that there's, you supported his mother that's an awful an awful injustice yeah an awful injustice I know there's a there, mommy can't get the truth for for her son. We wouldn't be supporting women if we weren't willing to weigh in behind Fiona Donoghue and her campaign for justice for a wee boy. Yeah. There's a lot of women's groups around Uri. There's another one that I noticed um, and this was this is just a um the what are they called? Hen Oh, the hiking hens. The hiking hens. Oh, that's I our re- friend. That's our friend. Margaret McShane's on it. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'd like to have a look at them someday because they... they this one, one of I, our, I believe one of I read our committee story. members is on it. Oh, so really? So I could hook you up with her. I, yeah, because I was reading about them and I saw that they just um, started off just, you know, some small number of a couple of women deciding, oh, let's go for a walk and see if any other women want to come along. And they were inundated. Yeah. So I don't know what does that say about for what does that say about <laughs> the women of this area are are very collective in nature if that makes sense we're strong and we're independent on our own but when we get together we're mighty yeah and any group that starts up women women are the backbone of it yeah you know, really and like those women for the hiking hands are tend to be you know it would start off as women that either feel you know don't want to walk by themselves for whatever reason they might feel scared to walk in the mountains by themselves or else they just might like a bit of company and there were a lot of you know women who are you know separated or are widowed or forging links forging friendships forging yeah. resilience and I suppose among I mean, each we're other. not just yeah. going to talk about women that would be unfair there's things like men's, men's sheds and everything as oh, well there is there's... so community you know activity is 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 powerful around here oh absolutely absolutely there's another group Karen Coins, who collected oh my goodness 30 something thousand pound at Christmas and delivered to 135 families uh, from their Christmas dinner to all the ch- toys for their children, and they went around housing estates in Uri and just with buckets, change. They weren't asking anybody for notes. And they collected near thirty thousand pound for underprivileged families, which goes to show the generosity things, of the people in the town too. Things start uh, in this area, in Uri, Morn and Down, South Armagh. Once something starts, the support comes from all. Yeah. From all areas, it it it's a marvelous community spirit. Yeah, marvelous. So, um, are you you're gonna the plans are to keep this to keep this going? Um, the pro life people they protest from eleven o'clock to two o'clock, I think. Um, after us, but um, we have decided not to be there when the clinic's on. Yeah, it's unfair. It's unjust on the women who may need access and the staff so the staff know that we're supportive of them they're very very thankful for our stance on the on the position and we'll continue to do that until safe zones are implemented and Stormont gets the the legislation passed and how is that coming along you know, you were talking about the politicians that have been involved in the campaign and you've had all sorts, you know, how how have you gone, has, have things gone through council? Yes, well, um, luckily here in Uri Morning Down Council, there was a Sinn Féin motion had gone through and had all party support um, for safe zones, which was very encouraging that it got all party support. Yeah. Um, in Derry, people for profit, um, they had a motion went through council, and it received all party support to my knowledge, and there are various other councils throughout the north, which we think is very heartening yeah. to us. Um, that an issue which we know is a motive, which we know, um, can cause people, um within parties to use their conscience vote etc 
but the fact that in a number of councils it has got all party support yeah. shows that the campaign for safe zones is is a positive yeah is a positive seen one as a, as a fair it's fair it's um allowing people to access services with dignity i think people can see through the emotive part of what people are protesting about yeah to, th- to think no this this isn't right this needs to happen yeah and we're hoping that in Stormont that all parties follow through with that and this legislation can be pushed through quickly because it's very very much needed yeah and then there won't be a need for you to go out there on exactly. Wednesdays anymore you can and sit on our wee chairs you can go hiking yeah. with the um the hiking hands I wish instead. it was fit <laughs> I wish it was fit you don't you know say anything or you don't have counter signs or anything do you or we you... just have our supporting women yuri banner that's it and we stand dignified um on occasions we dress up in costumes and mm-hmm. um, children's costumes because we want the children to remember elmo and elsa not pictures of dead babies yeah when um we did that when they were protesting at one end of the street and we were protesting at the other we have since come away from that and said we're not protesting the clinic so on yeah so but the the actually other groups have um have decided that they're going to take that on board to costumes yeah to yeah. create a positive distraction for children who may have to access some of these healthcare facilities so no there are some other groups who are going to do that and that makes sense because their eye will be drawn automatically to the um to the people in the costumes. Yes. Their eye would not be drawn to the intimidating posters. Yes. Which is what you're trying to do in the That's first what place. Our, what our aim was. Yeah. Just a positive distraction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been lovely talking to you, Cara. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And thank you. And I hope you continue on in your endeavours to make everything safer for all the women and men of, of Newry and getting involved in as many campaigns as you as you need to and I hope that the outcomes turn out well for um, Noah Dunna who's mum and you know Absolutely. other Absolutely. other issues yeah. like that that are you know that we all feel we all Absolutely. feel for people like that indeed yeah indeed thank you okay thank you Cara Thanks for listening to that very informative chat with Cara about supporting women Yuri and the the work that they do to support the community in different campaigns that have been ongoing. Remember to keep getting all of your news from Arma Eye and I hope you join us next time for our podcast. From the I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. To the We see all sorts of life-changing moments at McKinney Competitions. How would you react? Cars, houses, tech bundles and more. From just £2 a ticket, no purchase necessary. For competitions, rules and conditions, see mckinneycompetitions.com.